Hi guys, how are you doing? It's the 27th of July 2014. We're going to talk about this, uh, Christine Lagarde and the IMF, in a, in a few seconds. But uh, a couple of days ago I did a video uh, with regards to the 25th of the 7th 2004 because we, we come to the conclusion that there's something could have gone down on that day that might have been important to a very large plan that has been going on which could involve MH370, MH17, the IMF, the BRICS nation and Mossad in Israel. Um, I think something significant did take place on that day however um, you know it is going to take a little bit of time for that incident that happened on that day for it to mature into something else. What is that I'm talking about? On the 25th of the 7th 2014 or triple sevens and you know up to date I think you're aware of what's been going on with the triple seven two hundreds and those aircrafts from Malaysian Airlines but what took place in the Ukraine was the Prime Minister resigning and therefore the government resigning. That doesn't mean that there is no one in control of the, of the Ukraine at the moment. What that means is that there is a president in the Ukraine which needs to now uh, elect a new government to run the country. But could have this been by design? Could this now allow NATO to come in on a peace mission to resolve the crisis in the east of Ukraine and the Ukraine itself, therefore bringing NATO forces that much closer to the Russian border. We already have an inclination that there may be Russian support on that porous border between East Ukraine and Russia. If NATO come into this scenario, there could be the beginnings of a third world war and it might have taken uh, effect or the seed date might have well been the 25th of the 7th 2014. It may not have. All I'm saying is the only thing of significance that I could come across that took place on that day was that the Prime Minister of the Ukraine had resigned after only being in power a very short period of time. Getting back to Christina uh, Lagrad from the IMF. She broadcasted this message on the 15th of January 2004 now, why did she do that and was it based on intelligence gathered from the IMF that something that would affect the IMF would be taking place in months to come and what were the IMF going to do about this problem? What I'm talking about is the BRICS nation. <clears throat> was there intelligence being gathered on what Putin went over to Brazil to announce? Uh, only a few weeks ago and that was a new global bank that involved half the population on this planet from those countries that are known now as the BRICS nations. Did the IMF want to do something about this situation in not just a, mat a manner of financial but was they going to take further action with regards to that and how then does this tie in Mossad, Russia, the IMF and the BRICS nations. Well there's a couple of videos I want to run just before we get started and that is because there has been a trend now all this could be just a conspiracy but there is a trend right of incidents that have happened in our recent history globally uh, with regards to false flag operations. False flag operations by all means are not new but there, do, there does appear to be a source of where they start and this goes back to the uh, destruction of the US Liberty which was a, a spy ship um, creme de la creme of its uh, generation, you know, with um, plenty of radar antennas, um, <clears throat> but basically that that ship was attacked by Israel, and not only was it attacked 
as you'll see in the coming videos, but it was uh, it was well known to Israel that the ship was a United States vessel. And uh, the reason for this, I believe, is that they wanted Egypt, the Egyptians to get the blame. Now, why do I say that? Is because these aircraft that launched the attack on the Liberty uh, killed every single one almost on board and they also jammed the radio equipment on board the Liberty so that it could not transmit its uh, message for you know backup. However th as you'll see in the video that message does get back to the United States after they have launched um, you know a support package from neighbouring um, aircraft carriers, uh, you know, to retaliate against those oppressing, the, you know, you know, coming against those attacking the Liberty. And what happens when they find out it's Israel is that they call back those aircraft that was launched from the United States aircraft carriers. The thing is, is that whilst they're returning now to the ships, those those aircraft that went out to support the Liberty under fire, whilst it was under fire by Israel, uh, the Liberty is taking that much fire damage. It's it's had um, incendiary devices deployed on its decks. Uh, it's now decided to abandon the ship, and these sailors are now in rafts on the on the sea, uh, abandoning the Liberty, and Israel come in with their gunships and open fire on the injured soldiers, American soldiers that were on the life rafts further killing everyone basically. And the US doesn't appear from that point to get involved in this incident. I believe the US had launched um, the jet fighters to defend the Liberty at the time against what they thought might have been Egyptian fighter jets attacking their thing and it was that I believe you know one of the false flags attacks that uh, appear in a you know a regular pattern it's like I've also included as well in this video um, some information with regards to 9-11 and uh, you know the information with regards to 60 or so Israeli spies being arrested uh, in connection, in direct connection with the 9-11 attacks. Make of this what you will guys. It's going to be, probably be a lengthy video this one. Um, you know, I'll try and keep it, you know, fact based so that you can see where I'm going with this. You see, um, I will make the conclusion again at the end of this video <coughs> is uh, after Christine Lagarde's IMF uh, speech where she talks about these sevens she seems to name or you know identify a date in which you know I think was more coincidental uh, than anything else or perhaps not so coincidental where MH17 goes down but prior to that after she makes this speech on the 15th when it was aired of January 2014 a month or so after MH370 disappears. Now the thing is guys we have had more information come out now about MH17 that recently went down in the Ukraine that bodies were falling from the sky and when they hit the ground they didn't appear to have any blood in them. Also they were already smells of decomposing. Now the only way that could have happened is if those bodies on board that plane were already dead and as I have suggested in other videos that perhaps MH370 MH was taken to somewhere very secretive it would have to be that possibly within the vicinity of Malaysia where it take, took off and well within the flight capabilities of its distance it could travel that could have been Diego Garcia as has been mentioned by many people on the internet already when it took off it climbed to a certain amount of altitude, the cabin, the passenger compartments were decompressed and they suffocated. When the plane landed, possibly at Diego Garcia, the bodies was removed, stripped of all the clothing, loaded into containers where they could be refrigerated up until perhaps a most recent time where they could be dressed 
in clothing perhaps that would look like they'd just come from Amsterdam where MH17 took off and have luggage passports for a new identity loaded on that plane it was then directed over a war zone <coughs> shot down landed 25 miles from Donetsk in in Ukraine uh, 25 miles from the Russian border and immediately before any investigation was was concluded or even you know attempted it was blamed on Russia for shooting it down regardless we know that Russia were involved uh, recently in the establishment of the new global bank by the BRICS nation and we know that it would have had a direct impact on the IMF so was this a false flag operation to bring the West and the East into a third world war for some reason was this their retaliation and did it go horribly wrong and the reason why I say that is because before those flight recorders was handed over to the UK uh, departments that was going to look into them they'd already gone to Russia and not only that the information on what those, those rebels saw around the wreckage and I do believe it could have been secret um, uh, forces from Russia that was there first on the scene uh, that witnessed what they saw and that was already decaying bodies and no signs of immediate trauma impact that would have been more commonly associated with a downed civilian aircraft. <clears throat> now, for some reason, there hasn't been a lot said now about this incident, and <clears throat> I believe the intentions are still there to draw Russia into a third world war. I believe the reason why they want to do that is because recently, days after Putin announcing that he announcing that he has just created a global bank to challenge the Federal Reserve and the uh, global currency, the dollar. This all seems to start to happen. We get after that MH17 crash and the blame directed directly at Russia for bringing it down. We know that the NATO troops and you, uh, nations associated with NATO have installed recently a government in the Ukraine and we know that there are all around Russia now uh, NATO forces and some of those have been recently deployed especially the maritime um, side of things so I'm going to run these next two videos guys I think I don't need to uh, really do so much of a you know a summary on this video I think I've just explained uh, where it is I'm going on this so you know there's still uh, 20 minutes of video to watch on a little bit on the 9-11 attacks with Mossad involvement and also uh, the US Liberty and there's also the speech that JFK talks about uh, prior to his assassination himself with regards to secret uh, organizations that have no benefit in modern uh, peaceful times so enjoy the rest of this video guys and um, you know give me your thoughts and feedback I know this all might sound conspiracy but I think there is some truth in this and uh, the only other thing I'll add right to this and you know you might think this uh, yourself as well guys there has been over the last few weeks many coincidences and I think they are they are more than coincidences and I'm going to just mention them right first of all two aircrafts from the same airline company are supposedly quote downed and the other coincidence is at the time that this aircraft recently MH17 is downed Israel go on an all-out offensive on the Palestine Palestinians in Gaza not only that we have Putin weeks ago announcing that he has just created a global bank with the BRICS nations to challenge 
um, you know, the rest of the world, which would be, in my case, its equivalent, the IMF. So just bearing those, bearing those in mind, guys. You know, uh, you know, watch the end of the video and give me your views on this. And the only other thing I'd want to add is that I, I find it sad that someone, even with reason, would want revenge. You know, this is what I'm talking about. You know, nothing really comes of revenge other than more bloodshed in these matters. You know, and that's that's a terrible shame. And it's also in my view an understanding of where humanity's mindset is right now and it's also key to predicting further events with this mindset of these people that only have power because of their wealth and I've got to say this it does appear that you know maybe not in the near few weeks or months there will be at some point in our future a war where we pretty much destroy ourselves and we have the intelligence to know that right now at this present moment in time we have the intelligence to know that it doesn't take a lot of uh, logic to know that when the majority of the spending throughout these um, very wealthy nations is mainly in one area and the area then which that is is in the war machine and the building of more machines to do more atrocities and destruction uh, you get an idea that the main business of humanity right now at this present time is in killing each other and there, there is no logic in that whatsoever so when I say that the logic uh, you know, when I'm talking about this, guys, I'm giving you, you know, on a plate exactly where humanity is right now. And you can see that if it doesn't make an abrupt turnaround at some point, it will, without a doubt, inevitably destroy itself. This is the precipice that people need to understand somebody and it's not just me there has been this is a joint effort by thousands of people to put it there for you to see that if you do not start to make the right decisions from this point on the trend will predict that at some point you will wipe yourselves out and everybody has the responsibility to do something about this. I've always said it, you can create a heaven on this earth or you can create a hell upon it. The trend is showing that the way things are going are tending towards a very hostile planet which looks more like hell. Anyhow, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop now before I continue, guys. Watch the video. Um.
two suspects are in FBI custody after a truckload of explosives was discovered around the George Washington Bridge. affair was an Israeli terrorist operation in Egypt known as Operation Susanna, in which Egyptian, American, and British-owned targets in Egypt were bombed in the summer of 1954. In the early 1950s, the U.S. was becoming friendlier with Egypt and was moving to influence the British to leave the Egyptian Suez Canal, which they had manned for almost 20 years. The apartheid state of Israel would not tolerate the British leaving, and elements within Israel began planning a variety of terrorist attacks on British, Egyptian, and American targets. These attacks would then be blamed on so-called Muslim extremists. This would incite the anger of the British and the Americans towards Egypt and Islam and sour the burgeoning relationship between Egypt, America, and Britain. This plan for a series of false flag terrorist attacks was codenamed Operation Susanna. A group of Egyptian Jews was recruited to carry out the attacks. Jews in the diaspora that are recruited are known as Sionim. The first bomb went off on July 2nd when a post office in Alexandria was firebombed. On the 11th of July, the Anglo-Egyptian Suez negotiations, which had been blocked for nine months, got underway again. Despite the British assuring Israel that stockpiled weapons would not be given to the Egyptians, on July 14th, the Jewish terrorists firebombed U.S. information agency libraries in Cairo and Alexandria. However, that same day, a phosphorus bomb exploded prematurely in one of the terrorists, Philip Natanson's pocket, just as he was about to enter the British-owned Rio Cinema in Alexandria. His arrest and his subsequent confession led to the breakup of the whole ring. However, while the plot was being investigated, the Zionist Jewish terrorists started fires in two Cairo cinemas, in the central post office, and the railway station. After the plot was uncovered, many tried to spin it as an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. As the trial of the Jewish terrorists became more and more public, Israel was forced to do damage control. They claimed that the Egyptians were tipped off and allowed the attacks to happen. They also singularly scapegoated the defense minister, Pinhas Levon, to prevent the exposure of the real group inside the apartheid state of Israel, who planned Operation Susanna and several other false flag terrorist attacks. But this would not be the last time America's so-called ally and friend and recipient of over $150 billion in aid would attack her. It looks like one of those scenes of an old building being purposely dynamited and blown up. Anybody who's ever watched a building being demolished on purpose knows that if you're going to do this, you have to get at the under infrastructure of a building and bring it down. The way the structure is collapsing, this was the result of something that was planned. It's not accidental that the first tower just happened to collapse and then the second tower just happened to collapse in exactly the same way. How they accomplished this, we don't know. June 8, 1967 was a clear, sunny day with unlimited visibility. It was such a nice day that as the USS Liberty floated in international waters, 14 miles north of the Sinai Peninsula, sailors were sunbathing on the spy ship's deck. But all wasn't as tranquil as the sunny day would convey, for June 8 also marked the fourth day of the Six-Day War, which involved Israel, Egypt, Syria, and Jordan. Monitoring this situation was the USS Liberty, a World War II freighter that had been converted into a spy vessel by the NSA, the National Security Agency. 
In fact, the Liberty was the most sophisticated and identifiable intelligence ship in the world at the time, with dozens of large antennas, state-of-the-art electronic intercept equipment, moon-bound satellite dishes, massive aerials, plus a TRSS comm system that sent real-time messages to the Pentagon. The Liberty also flew a large 5 by 8 foot American flag, was freshly painted with large white numbers and letters on its bow and hull, and contained no offensive weaponry except for four 50 caliber machine guns for defensive purposes. These details are important to keep in mind, because at 8 o'clock a.m., as the Liberty floated in international waters at less than 5 knots, with a 5 by 8 foot American flag furling in the wind, a squadron of Israeli jets circled the ship at least a dozen times. These reconnaissance planes flew at such low levels, as close as 200 feet, that the sailors aboard the Liberty actually waved to the Israeli pilots. And, as we will show later in this documentary, those commanding these Israeli jets not only ID'd this ship as being of American origin, they also positively ID'd it as being the USS Liberty. Despite being fully aware of its status, at 2 p.m. in the afternoon, three unmarked Israeli Mystere and Mirage III fighter jets pummeled the Liberty with rockets and cannon fire. These bombers initially went after the ship's antenna and electronics dishes, in the process filling the American flag full of holes. As sailors fled for cover, Liberty crewmen hoisted a new, even larger 7 by 13 foot flag into the air. But this new, even larger flag didn't stop the Israeli onslaught as they sprayed the Liberty with napalm, the highly incendiary substance burning the sailors' flesh. While this unprovoked act of war was taking place, radio operators aboard the Liberty tried to signal for help. But their SOS distress messages were not heard because the Israelis had deliberately jammed all five of the Liberty's emergency radio channels, a phenomenon that shows quite clearly that the interfering party was aware of their target beforehand and had previously zeroed in on it, for to jam a stranger's radio in such a rapid manner is virtually impossible. Unable to get help, the USS Liberty, with eight sailors already dead and 100 wounded, including Commander William McGonagall, was a sitting duck for the Israelis who at 2.24 p.m. sent in three torpedo boats loaded with thousands of pounds of explosives. With their target already in flames, the Israelis bombed the Liberty with shells, quickly killing 25 more men. As firefighters and medical personnel tried to put out fires and save their ship and crew, they were repeatedly machine gunned by Israeli aircraft. By 3.15 p.m., after it was apparent that the Israelis didn't want to leave a single man alive, the crew abandoned ship. But as the surviving crewmen fled for their lives, Israeli warships at close range sprayed those rafts aboard the ship with gunfire, along with those carrying the wounded that had already been lowered into the water. It was a sickening display of brutality and savage inhumanity, a total lack of regard for human life. The Israelis wanted no survivors. When word eventually reached the White House, President Lyndon Baines Johnson assumed that it was the Egyptians attacking our ship, so he immediately dispatched air support, which would have reached the Liberty in 40 minutes. But then, when LBJ discovered that it was in fact the Israelis who were attacking our vessel, he immediately called off the rescue. In other words, Phantom jets, already en route from the Sixth Fleet, were ordered to turn around and return to their point of origin. Try to let the seriousness of this situation sink in for a moment. Navy fighters launched from the aircraft carriers USS Saratoga and USS America were recalled by the White House. But the blame doesn't stop there. Defense Secretary Robert McNamara and National Security Advisor Walter Rostow at first ordered instantaneous retaliation. But upon discovering that the attack originated from Israel's Haifa base, McNamara called off the exercise. In fact, it was reported later that Robert McNamara was so irate when discovering that Liberty Radio men contacted the USS America that he barked, tell the 6th Fleet to get those aircraft back immediately. Due to this traitorous behavior, the USS Liberty had to wait 16 hours after the attack stopped before they were rescued by our military forces. It is the only instance in American naval history that a rescue mission was aborted while an American ship was under attack. In all, the Israeli attack on America's USS Liberty, a ship that sat almost motionless in the water with no offensive weaponry while sailors sunbathed on its deck, 
lasted for two full hours, equaling the length of Japan's infamous attack on Pearl Harbor. 821 holes were found in the ship, resulting from aircraft rockets, cannon fire, and torpedo blasts, while over 3,000 holes from Israel's machine gun fire were also counted. Far more tragically, the Israelis killed 34 Americans that fateful day, wounded 171 more, and instigated the worst U.S. naval losses since World War II. And even though U.S. Secretary of State Dean Rusk and Joint Chiefs of Staff Admiral Thomas Moore called this attack deliberate, to this day not one guilty party in Israel or the U.S. has been brought to justice. All of the thoughts that always come back to us time and time again is how this thing is still being covered up after 40 years. And we know without doubt from those circumstances that it was a deliberate attack. Uh, anyone who looks carefully at the details knows that it was deliberate, and that includes such people as Dean Rusk, Secretary of State, and all of the heads of all of the intelligence organizations. Will the record show that the statements of Mr. Ennis are correct? Here are a few quotes for your consideration. On the strength of intercept transcripts of pilots' conversations during the attack, the question of the attack's deliberateness just wasn't a disputed issue within the agency. Lieutenant General William E. Odom, former director, National Security Agency, interview with David Walsh on March 3rd, 2003, reported in Naval Institute Proceedings, June 2003. Inman said he flatly rejected the crystal thesis that the attack was an accident. Quote, it is just exceedingly difficult to believe that the USS Liberty was not correctly identified, based on talks with NSA seniors at the time having direct knowledge of intercepted communications. No NSA official could be found who dissented from the deliberate conclusion. Admiral Bobby Ray Inman, United States Navy, Director, National Security Agency, 1977 to 1981, reported in Proceedings, June 2003. Quote, I can tell you for an absolute certainty from intercepted communications that they knew they were attacking an American ship, unquote. Oliver Kirby, former deputy director for operations and production, National Security Agency. Kirby participated in the NSA's investigation of the attack and reviewed translations of intercepted communications between pilots and their headquarters, which he reports show conclusively that they knew their target was an American ship. Kirby is considered the godfather of the USS Liberty and USS Pueblo intercept programs. From telephone interviews with James Ennis and David Walsh for Friendless Fire Proceedings, June 2003. In a handwritten note dated 26th August 1967 by NSA Deputy Director Louis W. Tordella reacting to the Israeli court decision exonerating Israelis of all the blame for the Liberty attack, it is stated, quote, a nice whitewash for a group of ignorant, stupid, and inept f***ers, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, the very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no secret is revealed. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. 
confident that with your help, it's free and independent. years since a civilian working for the Navy was charged with passing secrets to Israel. Jonathan Pollard pled guilty to conspiracy to commit espionage and is serving a life sentence. At first, Israeli leaders claimed Pollard was part of a rogue operation, but later took responsibility for his work. Now, Fox News has learned some U.S. investigators believe that there are Israelis again very much engaged in spying in and on the U.S., who may have known things they didn't tell us before September 11th. Fox News correspondent Carl Cameron has details in the first of a four-part series. Since September 11th, more than 60 Israelis have been arrested or detained, either under the new Patriot anti-terrorism law or for immigration violations. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained, according to investigators, who say some of the detainees also failed polygraph questions when asked about alleged surveillance activities against and in the United States. There is no indication that the Israelis were involved in the 9-11 attacks, but investigators suspect that the Israelis may have gathered intelligence about the attacks in advance and not shared it. A highly placed investigator said there are, quote, tie-ins, but when asked for details, he flatly refused to describe them, saying, quote, evidence linking these Israelis to 9-11 is classified. I cannot tell you about evidence that has been gathered. It's classified information. Fox News has learned that one group of Israelis, spotted in North Carolina recently, is suspected of keeping an apartment in California to spy on a group of Arabs who the United States is also investigating for links to terrorism. Numerous classified documents obtained by Fox News indicate that even prior to September 11th, as many as 140 other Israelis had been detained or arrested in a secretive and sprawling investigation into suspected espionage by Israelis in the United States. Investigators from numerous government agencies are part of a working group that's been compiling evidence since the mid-90s. These documents detail hundreds of incidents in cities and towns across the country that investigators say, quote, may well be an organized intelligence gathering activity. The first part of the investigation focuses on Israelis who say they are art students from the University of Jerusalem and Bazalel Academy. They repeatedly made contact with U.S. government personnel, the report says, by saying they wanted to sell cheap art or handiwork. Of course, guys, everything within this video contains no definitive, you know, evidence that Mossad, Israel, and the IMF and the other Western nations had any involvement in the bringing down of flight MH17 and then accusing Russia of doing it in a pretext to start a third world war. <coughs> but if this was a false flag attack the only thing that can come from such a planned false flag attack is one thing and that is motivation to motivate people to act or think in a certain way now how did the majority of the people when they heard that flight MH17 had been shot down in the Ukraine and that Russia was responsible for it. We've seen the mainstream media in the UK alone launch an offensive on Putin, blaming him and his rebels for the downing of this. When, days later, after the aircraft had gone down, we'd seen, presented by the Russians, evidence to say that there was a Ukrainian fighter jet tracking flight MH17 before it was shot down. What I'm saying is that the, uh, the outcome of false flag attacks is nothing more than to motivate people in order to act a specific way. Let's go back to 9-11. It was on the pretext of 9-11 towers being dropped that war was soon going to take place with Iraq and you see even the Twin Towers was not enough to push the American public people to the point where they would commit war 
or go to war with Iraq again. They needed something else and what they told us was that Saddam Hussein and the Iraqi nation were developing weapons of mass destruction. You may have remembered Colin Powell holding up that little vial uh, in that uh, meeting saying that if this was something and so of a poison and I took the lid off and dispersed it, it would kill everybody in this room. That was the sort of programming they wanted to install into the people so that they could have support for the war in Iraq. Now, if all this was so, I just ask this question, guys, and I've, you know, looked into a few things, and I understand that Aslama bin Laden was murdered in a night raid on a compound in India, I think it was, and uh, his body was dumped out at sea. And we don't really have proof of any of that happening. We only have their say so, and we only have their say so that Al Qaeda was linked to slamming two planes into a building, but the buildings fell down in such a manner, not once but twice, that, and that's not including Building Seven because that would have been a third time. All buildings come down as though they was in a controlled manner. We see these new brand new passports, these terrorists that slam the planes into the tower conveniently found amongst the debris within you know a short period of time after they fell that linked this to su supposed terrorists and again in MH17 we see these brand new passports laying all around and conveniently a t-shirt that is viewed by the media more than once saying I love Amsterdam as if to say we need to make sure that it is in the mindset of the people watching this that they do know that this aircraft took off from Amsterdam airport and that it was filled with civilians and not as it now seems from lots of reports on the ground of the wreckage that the plane was actually carrying dead bodies already There must have been a considerable amount of intelligence and investigation going on months and months and months even before Christina from the IMF makes this announcement of the sevens and this you know magical number and that we're going to go into a period she also talks about you know this going back to you know it's a hundred years anniversary of uh, World War <coughs> uh, One is it all whatever and she also talks about the market cheaters of 2007 and so on and so forth all relating it to you know these coincidental number of seven and numerology or whatever all I'm saying is there guys and I know I'm going a long way about it is I believe there was intelligence being gathered on Putin that he was a going that he was going to do this uh, you know with the other BRICS nations and that they all wanted it stopped in somehow and if they was going to take us to a war with Russia they needed to get public support and maybe they chose flight MH17 as a mechanism to do that because it would have been an atrocity and it was an atrocity to shoot down a civilian aircraft in any case but the thing was is that that plane was not only diverted over that region but it was also told to descend by thousands of feet as well to make it an easier prey I don't think there's any coincidence about any of this I think this has been on the cards for a long time and Christina knew about it back in January after that MH370 uh, MH3, uh, disappears and then it reappears conveniently this is just a coincidence in itself you know this plane or this airline company being involved in two incidents in a short period of time thing is that Christine 
pretty much give the date on when NH17 was going down and it did and she was trying to be clever in doing so that a certain amount of people perhaps at this speech that she gives has the same awareness and understanding of what is to shortly take place after this evening guys you know I'm going to leave it here how do things stand with regards to this possible war that could get started well as I mentioned earlier on in the video you know there is that Prime Minister that resigned recently in the Ukraine is this an invitation for NATO to take up a peace mission quote supposedly in the Ukraine does that bring NATO forces that much closer to President Putin where enough will be enough and he will react because I've got to say this for a human being he is acting exceptionally well he's very calm he's not biting at the bait and the other side that is trying to provoke a reaction from him know this so I would say watch this space I would also say you know you really want to look into the implications of what President Putin has just set up with the BRICS nations and how that poses a threat on the rest of the world's economy because that is something that's not being mentioned conveniently by the press at the moment as always guys I apologize for the length of time in which it's took to do this video but there's been a lot of information I wanted to get across in it like I say none of it is uh, evidence but um, you know I'll leave it down to you to make up your own decisions on it I'll say as I usually do bye for now